for this video. Um, today we're going to be doing a uh, configuration for using pushover notifications on a microtick. Um, if you're not familiar with what pushover is, it's basically a um, uh, an application that we can use to send notifications to devices such as phones, um, desktops, Android, iPhones, tablets, whatever you like. Um, and using their API, we can um, send our notifications directly from our Microtik. Um, so basically, we're going to go through the setup. We're going to create our pushover um, tokens. We're going to add an application um, for that app, for that pushover, and we're going to then um, install a uh, write a script on the Microtik, and then we'll uh, demonstrate how we use that then script. Um, going forward if we wanted to then notify of any uh, changes. So let's jump onto it. Um, first thing, uh, if you head on to the, in, the link in the description below, we'll take you to this, uh, this page, which I've created on my website, which basically just goes through the step-by-step -step guides we're gonna look at now. So, um, you know, if you wanna revisit it and, and set this up yourself, uh, it's often easier to follow the guide. So just to let you know that's there. Um, but first thing we're going to do is head into uh, Pushover. So if you don't have an account, set one up. Um, you'll also need to download the app onto your phone. Um, there is a 30 day free um, trial with this. However, um, the uh, price for per device is uh, so it's just five uh, US dollars pretty much. Um, so it's, and that's a one off price. So if likely if you're just going to update yourself this you just purchase the one off uh it's not a uh, huge amount there's no subscription fees as you can see there um so anyway but if you just want to play around with it go ahead and use that 30 day license so let's go back onto the main screen um once you log into your uh once you create your account you download the app you log into that um app with your same device um and then you give it a name like i've got here just called it mm test phone and then there's this option here just if you want to test it so we just go for default um yeah normal and then we just give it uh test test and then we just hit send notification and yeah pops on the phone straight away test test okay so what we're going to do now is do something a bit uh, get rid of that one okay now we're going to um, head down here to uh, your applications and we're going to create a new application um, given a name so this is going to be running from my CHR I've got um, in AWS so it's in Australia um, give it a, don't need a description we don't worry about that and there's an option here for an icon um, it's just good to okay and I've got a so small icon here uh, has to be 72 by 72 but if it's any bigger than that prime it's square it will just resize it for you and then this will just come up i'll show you when that happens um just a way of identifying so you can have this per device that it's sending from if you've got multiple devices or you can have it per uh, application that's coming it just gives it a bit more of a visual if you've got lots of these coming in um so we want to go ahead and copy this api token key what we'll do is we'll stick that just in a notepad. Okay. Let's, uh, app, call that the app key. Okay. Now we head back to our main page. You can see that there it is there, all created for us. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. There is this, by the way, this email address here, um, which if we send an email to that, we'll also. Uh, that I'll then just uh, send notifications to all of our devices, um, which would could be a quicker way of doing it, but it's, you've got less control over it. Just worth pointing that out there. Uh, now we stick in our, this one's gonna be our user. Okay, that should be the two bits of information we need. So we're all set up. What we're gonna do now is uh, jump on our Microtech and we'll start configuring the script. So what I'll do is I'll go back onto that website I mentioned, and in here we've got, I've got the script already laid out. Um, I suppose what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this fetch 
um, command, which we're going to run, and then that will send to the uh, relevant application. Um, but what I'll do is I'll copy this one. This is the script I wrote, which where we set the variables uh, separately, just for a bit of um, easier changing. Um, another thing, when you copy from here, it doesn't really copy very well into the uh, the Microsoft, so I just always just put it into a, a simple text editor, such as Notepad or Notepad++. Um, and then we go to System, Scripts, Add a Script, I'll call this one Pushover. Don't require permissions, so it can run from anything. And there we go. So what we're going to be able to do is stick in these uh, variable, these uh, tokens we need. So the application one goes under app token and between these speech marks. And then the user one again goes under the user token. Okay, now we can specify our message here. So we can say test from script. Yeah, and then uh, title. For that CHRAU. Okay, now we apply that and then we run and then on our phone, there we go. So, anyway, it's very quick, which is good. Whereas, if you were sending it to an email, you could be waiting you know, a few minutes um, depending on your email setup. Um, but yeah, pretty much, there we go. So, we can delete that. If this app wasn't open, you just get a pop-up coming through on your phone, and then you just tap on that to read any more. So you can have more information in the, in the actual message itself if you wanted, um, such as you don't go into details about IP addresses and stuff if you're monitoring um, particular devices or anything like that. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to edit this, change the script a bit, so that we can pass the... Um, these two variables, which is going to be the message and the title. So basically, if we wanted to use this same config, or we wanted to send these for lots of different, say we got a netwatch, which I'm going to show you in a minute. We want to monitor ports, or we wanted to monitor, um, you know, any change in, so perhaps you got dynamic DNS script running and you wanted to notify when your IP address changed. You don't want to have to have a script per thing it's doing. So what I do is we can just um, actually just bung it in here first just so we don't uh, get any problems with the editing there we go now what this is doing so we've got global and we've got local variables so local ones will just run within the script the global ones will run outside of the script so if you're familiar with any bash scripting um for example you can um you know, include variables at the end of the 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 command to run the bash script, and then that will, and then within that script, you can then call those variables to add within that script you just run. If that makes sense. Um, if you're new to scripting, then it doesn't make a lot of sense. But um, hopefully, if you this example should at least show you what I mean. Um, so now we can change this, and instead of the text we put in here, we want to use these variables here so push over title and then push over message okay so we apply that now we're not going to run that script here anymore but if we bring up a terminal what we can do is so back on here, we're going to run this. Again, we'll just edit it in here first. Let's get that one because we don't need any more. In fact, we don't need any of that anymore. Okay, so we're going to set the global variable of pushover message to test dash new and then the global variable of uh, push over title to be this, that one. And then the last thing it's going to do is run that script. Okay. So we copy that. 
and then if we just keep this here we should see that run count go to one and bring up the phone again paste enter what happened there what did that open Okay, open up. There we go. So it's got um, test dash new. So now we've run that from this as a, a command from here now with those variables there. And just to confirm that, we can just we'll do new dash two. Get back on here. Yeah. So now, the reason for doing that, other than trying to be clever, is to run a net watch as an example. So it goes to tools, net watch. Now, if you're familiar, net watch is basically just a simple ping um, monitoring device. What I'm going to monitor is I've got an IPsec tunnel running, uh, IPsec to my UK CHR. And then through that, I've got a GRE tunnel. So we, what we're going to do, the other end of that is dot two. So we ping 10.1.1.2. That's 12. Two. Oh yeah, two pings. So what we're going to do is we'll disable that tunnel, but we're going to monitor that IP address. So 10.1.1.1.2. Simple. This just means ping. We call this. Uh, IP sick check and then interval we'll set to yeah, set to five just for testing okay so it's going to monitor every five seconds so apply that so that will uh why isn't it watch so that's our up so what we're doing here we add the that command here copy that And we're just going to say, so our message is going to be um, IPsec to CHR UK down. I mean, technically it's the GRE that's down, but we can assume that it's gone down because of the IPsec. And it's coming from there, so that's fine. And what we do is just, in fact, we can in the title, we can just say um, IPsec down. And then again, in fact, I put in the wrong one, haven't I? That's the down. And then back it up, we just change this to. Up. And. Up. So hopefully that makes sense. Got up and down. Okay. Okay, that. Now we're probably going to get an up one come up straight away. There we go. Because the first thing it does is unknown, and then the first thing going to resolve is up. So I'm just getting rid of that. They're red because I haven't read them. Go back. Like that. Um, so let's kill this tunnel. So we're just going to disable the tunnel. Netwatch will say down after five seconds. Up, right, down, and then there we go. Down. Let's bring that back up again. Up. There we go. If I get out of this app, and now I'm going to do the same again. After five seconds, there we go. See a little P. There we go. So you see the notification. And the same thing would be up as well. Cool. That's pretty much it. So then you just basically can then use that same procedure for any of your other monitoring you want to do. Um, some examples, like I mentioned, yeah, your net watch, yeah, your IP address changes, uh, any changes on your network. If you're running BGP and you wanted to make, you know, check if you've got a neighborhood go down, anything like that, really. Um, very powerful and it's just a handy way of giving you a notification so you can keep an eye on your network um, when you're not constantly watching it. Um, but yeah, any other 
thoughts, usages you can think of, um, please let me know. But thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate any feedback you have. If you want any other videos being made, please uh, comment to this video or, like I said, click on that link to the website. That will take you to, um, you know, various different tutorials and how to's and there's comment features on there if you wanted to add anything to that as well um but yeah if not please like and subscribe uh it's a big help um it's always appreciated and if not i'll see you on the next one thanks